Operational rules are one of the most powerful things you can do in an unsteady flow RAS model. Uh, this can be really helpful for fixed bed modeling and standard unsteady flow modeling, but one of the things we use it quite a bit for is sediment transport and reservoir flushing analysis. I'll do another video on you know, using operational rules for reservoir flushing analysis, but this week we're teaching the unsteady flow class here at HEC and I'm doing a rules demo and I thought, yeah, I'd spin it out as a video because here's the thing about operational rules in RAS. Um, it is one of the most powerful skills you can have in RAS. Once you know rules, you can do almost anything. Uh, but it's also scary. People are like just scared to start it and it's actually not that hard. And so I'm gonna do this video just so you can kind of see how these rules operate. The basic idea of operational rules is you can go into RAS and write some equations, some very simple you know, operational rules where essentially you can operate a gate or a set of gates um, based on any result that RAS computes. It's incredibly powerful and makes RAS incredibly flexible. And so we're going to show you how to do it. And so here I've got a demo developed by Steve Piper. What Steve did is he, he took a river that had a inline structure in it. If you come and zoom in here, you know, the inline structure is here. So that's a dam. It's got a, a dam. And then just upstream of the dam, he added a lateral structure connected to a storage area. And this lateral structure has a gate in it. And you know, once you put a gate in a structure, then you can write rules against it because that's essentially what rules will do. It'll operate gates. It also operates pumps. You know, you want to attach other things to it like dredging and things like that. But for now, um, it operates gates. So we're going to write some rules against this gate. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just kind of going to kind of open the gate um, and divert flow until the storage area is full. And then we'll close the gate, a very simple operation. So to add rules, we're going to go to the unsteady flow editor. And in the unsteady flow editor, you'll see that this lateral structure has a mandatory boundary condition. Anything with gates, um, whether it's inline structure or lateral structure, is a mandatory boundary condition. Because if you've got a gate, um, the difference between a gate and a culvert is that you know the culvert's always open. The gate can open and close. So if you have a gate, we need to know, should it be open and close? How much? Or can we operate it in time? And so um, in this case, we have a time series gate opening as the default. And you can see that the gate opening is zero. And so this is just a way of like putting gate in there, but keeping it closed. And that's not what we want to do. We want to open and close this gate. So we'll go in and we will switch the operation to rules. And it says, hey, you're going to lose your very helpful zero time series gate opening. Um, and that's fine. And we'll bring up our rules editor. And so to define rules, you go up and put a description in here. We have it in there already. Um, and then to define rules, you're going to go in and enter and edit rule operations. But before that, we have these five default gate operate operators. Uh, these five default parameters, we, this is information we need to know. You can go in and change any of these during the course of your rules. You can change the rate or the maximum min opening, but we kind of need these. And so if you don't define them, they need to be in there already. So we're going to go in and define these. We're going to set the uh, maximum and the minimum opening rate to 0 0.1 feet per minute. And that just means that the gate will always open or close at 0 0.1 feet foot per minute. And the maximum gate opening is 10. The minimum is zero, and then we're going to start at zero. So that's our initial opening. OK, so we added those initial parameters. Now let's actually get into the meat of our rules. And so this is the rules editor. In order to add a new line of rules, you're going to click on the row you want to define, and then you're going to push one of these buttons. And this is where things get a little bit confusing, because you're going to be tempted to push new variable. Don't do that. You don't want a new variable. Um, these are the two main buttons you're going to use. Get simulation variable and set operational pr parameter. So get simulation variable is basically any variable anywhere in the model. You want the water surface across section three, you get a simulation variable. You want the flow over the dam, you get simulation variable. Anything that RAS produces that you want to be a criteria of operation, you get a simulation variable. 
If you want to do something in RAS, then you set operational parameter. Do you want to open your gate? Set operational parameter. Do you want to close your gate? Set operational parameter. Do you want to specify the flow through the gate? Set operational parameter. And these are the main two buttons you're going to use, although a lot of times you're going to want to do some branching if-else statements, just some, some Boolean logic, and then comments. Um, and so let's just start with a comment. And the comment is going to be rules demo. And then what's the first thing that we need? Well, the, what we want to do is we want to fill our, we don't open the gates until the reservoir fills and then we want to close them. And so what do we need to know from the model? Well, we need to know is our storage area full or not? And so we're going to, the next thing we're going to do, we'll click on the next line and this can get confusing because if you stay on the same line, it'll just overwrite it, but we'll click on the next line and we'll say, get simulational value. And what we want is the storage area water surface elevation. And so what you see here is a drop down, a tree structure, basically with everything RAS computes. There is a lot of cool stuff you could do here. You can tie your gate operations to almost anything in RAS. But we want to go to our storage area and then look at all the things that you could code against in the storage area. And we're just going to say water surface elevation. Now, here's a trick. Um, you actually have to select the storage area here. See how when I push that, store, the storage supply um, populated? This is a common error. You, you know, it populates, but you actually, when you only have only one, it doesn't make sense that you're going to choose it, but you still have to. If you have multiple storage areas, then it makes a lot of sense that you would choose it. And then over here, you can actually play around with time. So this is the value at the current time step, which is what we're going to do, but you can lag it by several time steps, or you can sum it over over several, or you can say, let's take the average. If the average over several time steps is X, then do this. So there's a lot of like temporal intelligence that you can add to this, but we're just gonna use the value at the current time step. Okay, so we have defined our variable, but we actually have to give it a name. And so this is a new variable and we'll just call it storage area water surface elevation. All right, so now we have a variable. Now we can write our operations against that variable. I want to open the gate until the storage area is full, and then I want to close it. And so I'm going to come in here. And so I set a simulation value. Now I want to set an operational parameter. But actually, I don't want to do that quite yet because you know, we have some criteria. And so before I do that, I'm actually going to go to my Boolean logic, my branch if-else statement. And I'm going to develop a if statement. And so I've got this if then logic, you can see we've got all the booleans here, but I'm gonna say, I wanna say if the storage area is not full or is less than five feet, uh, then open the gates. And so how do we do that? Well, this is our expression here. And so if I press edit, I get this first expression and you can, select the variable. We only have one variable. It's the storage area water surface elevation. But if you have multiple variables that you've defined, you could choose any of them. And then you can do kind of an expression around them. You can actually put a variable in the exponent. But really, like all I want to do is use the surface water, the water surface elevation in the storage area by itself. So I'm done. Actually, I have my variable. So if the storage area water surface ele elevation is less than, then I go here to edit again. And again, this seems like more than you need, but really all I wanna say is five. If it's less than five, then we're gonna do something. Okay, so if my storage area water surface elevation is less than five, now I get to do something in RAS. And so when I wanna tell RAS to do something, in some senses, get simulation variable, I'm asking RAS a question. Hey, what variable did you get here? Set operational parameter, I'm telling RAS to do something. Hey, do this. And so I'm going to go to set operational parameter. And there are a lot of things here. Um, one of the best ones is this structure total flow desired. We'll talk about this when we do a flushing video. But um, you can specify the flow through a structure. But if you do with a, if you specify the fixed throw, flow through a structure, if you don't say have enough water to send it through the structure, your model will crash. If you say desired, that's a little bit, that's more of a suggestion. You say, hey, Raz, I want you to put this much flow through the structure. But if you don't have it, that's OK. Just keep yourself stable. Um, so those are really cool. There's lots of other things you can do here. But we're just going to go right down to gate opening. Now, notice, now it populates the gate. 
again, we only have one gate. And so the, maybe this doesn't make sense if you only have one gate, but if you, a lot of these models have many gates. And so you go in and you select your gate. And so now we have gate opening, gate one. Um, and what are we going to do? Well, if the storage isn't full, we'll just open the gate and we'll open it all the way. We'll open it to 10. Now, will it go to 10 immediately? No, that'd shock the system. You can't open gates that fast. You know, we're stuck at 0.1 feet per second because we specified that earlier. And so basically it will start to open the gate until you get to that um, storage area wire service elevation um, of five. Okay, but now if we get to the water surface elevation of five, then we want to then we want to close the gate. And so we need an else statement. So we're going to go back to our branch if else. And we don't have criteria, so we'll just say else. And that means, hey, if it, if it isn't less than five, then you've, got, you've hit that five threshold. So then we go back here, and now you can set operational parameter, but here's a tip. You can actually click on that, say Control-C, Control-V, and just copy it. And then you click on this, you set it to zero, and that means that your gate is going to close. All right, so now you can't have an if statement without having an end if. So you just come down here and you press this and you press end if. And congratulations, you've just written a set of rules. Uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, so I'll say OK and OK. And then I will save and run. And then if I go to my rating curve and I select type lateral structure, you'll see that you know these can get pretty busy. Um, I'm going to turn the flows off for now. And there are some oscillations in the flows because we've done something a little bit weird. But if you look, this is the uh, this is the tailwater, which is the flow in the storage area, and this is the headwater. And you can see that the tailwater rises until it hits five feet and then actually the gates close but they only start to close right and so it can you get this kind of sinusoidal wave where it continues to fill but at a slower rate because the gates are closing and then eventually the gates close and, and uh, the final water surface elevation in that storage area is 10 feet okay so that's fine, but you know that's a lot of water. That's happening really fast. Um, and actually, the flow coming into the storage area is a like really big portion of the flow in the river itself. Um, so we actually don't want to do that. We want to take less out of the river. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to add an additional rule. We're going to say go ahead and open the gate if this stage in the storage area is less than five, but also open the gate if the flow over the lateral structure is less than 20% of the main flow, or we'll say the flow over the inline structure. Okay, so now this has gotten a little bit more sophisticated. We want the lateral structure to actually look at the inline structure and you know pass some of those data back and forth and do some math. So let's actually save this as a new as a new plan, but first we have to save the unsteady flow data. And so we'll say save flow data as, and let's just say 20% diversion. And then we need to save that as a new plan, which we'll call save plan as 20% diversion. And then we'll go back in and look at some rules. So for now, everything stays the same. I'm going to edit rules and operations. Um, but now I need two additional variables. Um, I need to get two simulational variables. Um, and one of them is going to be the flow through the lateral weir gates. And the other one is going to be the flow over the inline structure. So I'll come here and I'll say, hey, I, I need information from RAS. I need RAS to tell me something. So I'm going to say, get simulation value. You'll see it'll pop in there. And I'm going to go to the lateral structure. And I'm going to say the total flow. And the total flow is everything over and through the lateral structure. So it includes the gates. And you can see if you have more than one lateral structure, you'll choose it here. And you can add a temporal lag or averaging if you want, but I'm not going to. And I'm just going to say lateral structure flow. OK. 
And then I also want to do the same thing, get simulational value with the inline structure. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to choose inline structure, total flow. And again, you can choose the, uh, if you've got multiple inline structures, you can do that. And I'm just going to call this inline Q. Okay, so now I have three operational parameters. And so where am I going to put this new logic? Well, I'll come in here to the if then statement, but I'm going to make it an if and statement. So I can come in here and just click if and, and now I get a, two, a whole nother expression, a whole nother set of expressions. So the, the soil, the storage area water surface elevation, less than five, that's still in effect. But here I can do an and or an or. Here I want, I want to do an and because I want them both to be constraints. And then I can set another expression. And so we wanted to say, you know, go ahead and open the gate as long as you're getting, you know, less than 20% of the flow over the lateral structure. But if that starts to go above 20%, let's close the gate to slow that down. And so we're going to go to edit in the expression, and we're just going to choose the variable here. If the lateral structure flow is less than, and then here we want to choose the inline structure flow but we want to make it 20%. So here we'll just point, put 0 0.2. And so that's going to be you know, 20% of the inline flow. All right. And so now we have built that into here. That should slow down the flow. And so we'll come back. We'll say, OK. We will run. And then if you press the rating curve, we can look at the results. And so now you can see that the, uh, you know, these are the, this is the flow through the gates. And you see the flow through the gates kind of rises, but then equilibrates about the time that, you know, the flow gets high and it, it needs to equilibrate. Now the, the stage rises to a maximum of seven feet, and it seems to be doing so more slowly. So let's turn off these flows and just leave it with the tailwater stage. Go to option plans. We can turn on the other one, and we're going to turn off a bunch of these until all we're left with is the two tailwater stages, which is what's going on in the, in the storage area itself. The, the, the tailwater is always defined in the lateral structure as which direction the flow goes. And so here we have the original one where you know, it, it, it filled faster and it filled higher because it only, the only logic was, you know, are you at five feet? And then it, you know, it, as it closes, it can only close at 0.1 feet per second, so it overfills. Um, then you have the one where we add the additional logic and you know when flow is greater than 20 percent of the main flow it starts to close it and so it kind of necks down the flow more quickly um, and there you, know, you start to approach and close the gate about the time you get to five feet and, you know it overshoots a little bit but not nearly as much all right so that's a very brief demonstration of the operational rules this has an unbelievable number of applications. The uh, it has we have some very cool applications in sediment transport. One of the things that you'll notice is if you go to get simulational variables, there are actually sediment variables in there. You can go in and define the sediment concentration or the bed change, and so you can operate your gates based on the concentration that the sediment model is computing. We'll show you that in another video. Um, but for now, my name is Stanford Gibson. I am the sediment transport specialist on the RAS team, and this video was funded by the HHNC SET program.